This is the Skylong GK104 Pro Mechanical Keyboard. As you can see, this is a pretty unique looking keyboard with two LCD screens and these hidden keycap labels. Oh yeah, with the flip of a switch, it becomes a calculator. Let's get into it. My name is Patrick and this is Everyday Tech. Everyday Tech for Everyday People. And on this channel, I review everything tech, everything from smart homes to camera gear. In this video, I'm gonna be reviewing the Skylong GK104 Pro Mechanical Keyboard. Now, full disclosure, what geek, which sells these Skylong keyboards, reached out to me and asked me if I would review this keyboard. Although they did provide me with this keyboard for free, they're not seeing this video before it goes up. All my opinions are my own. Not too long ago, I did a review on the Skylong GK87 Pro which has now become my everyday keyboard, dethroning my beloved Keychron keyboards. Now, what I love about the GK87 is the customizable knobs and then the overall typing experience. Like the GK87, now the GK104 Pro has the same knobs, but now we have the full-size keyboard. And now this time we have the added LCD screen, which I wasn't able to review last time in the GK87 Pro. So let's get into this keyboard now. First, like the GK87 Pro, the GK104 Pro is a very well-built keyboard. It has quite a heft to it and is very well put together. It, there's three ways to connect to your device or your computer. First, it's via USB-C, then via Bluetooth, and then it also has a 2.4 gigahertz USB dongle. Now, if you connect via Bluetooth, you'll, you will get 125 hertz polling rate, then via the 2.4 gigahertz USB dongle, you get a thousand hertz polling rate. And then if you do it connect via USB-C, you get an 8,000 hertz polling rate. Now the polling rate is the amount of data that's being sent to your device. Now Skylog says this 8,000 hertz polling rate is an eSports level polling rate. You can switch between these three different modes with this toggle switch in the back. The 2.4 gigahertz dongle is cleverly hidden behind the back magnetic cover. I have the twilight color option which gives you these unique styled keycaps, which have the label on the bottom side of the keycaps, which gives you a cool look from above where the keycaps look a little blink. The look, this look is not for everyone, but I think it looks really cool. It does take a little getting used to, especially if you want to know where the labels are or look for the labels. You eventually get used to knowing where to look though. You are able to toggle between different backlighting effects with different keyboard shortcuts. Now the backlighting effects can either be always on, cycling, or reactive to your keyboard touch. There are a total of 10 different backlighting effects that you can toggle through. Now, unfortunately, like the GK87, you can't toggle through the different color palettes through keyboard sh shortcuts. Supposedly you can do all these customizations through the software, but as I'll demonstrate later, the software portion of this keyboard is the weakest part of this keyboard. Let's talk about the different ways that makes this keyboard unique. First, let's talk about the customizable knobs. The customizable knobs is the reason why the GK87 is now my everyday keyboard. Now, if you've seen that video, you'll see that I'm gonna customize this keyboard in the same way. You can customize the left turn, the right turn, and the press of the knob itself, because it is a button itself as well. So let's go from left to right from these three knobs. First, the left knob is what I'm calling the YouTube knob. You know, I can turn it left, when I turn it left, it activates the left arrow key on my keyboard. Turning it right activates the right arrow key. This allows me to skim through a YouTube video very easily. Then pressing the button is the play and pause button. The middle button is the backlight keyboard knob. Turning the knob adjusts the brightness of the backlight and then pressing the knob toggles the backlight on and off. And then the right knob is my volume control with the mute and unmute assigned to the press of the knob. Next, we come to the two inch LCD screen, which I wasn't able to review in my GK87 Pro video because they didn't send me the right pins to make it work. This LCD screen is optional though, and you can replace it with your conventional keycaps such as your page up and down, home and end, or insert and delete buttons. You can put this LCD screen into three different modes. First, you have the keyboard mode, which, is, which displays the keyboard, the mode that the keyboard's in, battery life, and the time. Then you have your input status mode, which gives you information on your key presses. Lastly, you have the picture mode where you can display 
different images or animated GIFs. Now, personally, I don't find the input mode very, or key press mode very use, useful, but I really like this display mode, displaying your different photos or animated GIFs. This is a really cool way to customize your keyboard to your personal taste. Now, there is a separate piece of software to upload images or animated GIFs to the LCD screen, which is a Windows only application, and it looks like it was made in the 90s. Lastly, we have the smaller LCD screen, which is a 1.7 inch LCD screen. This gives me information such as the time, the keyboard mode, and the battery life. I really like the simplicity of this screen because it gives me information right away. It's very simple and very readable. On the side of the LCD screen, you have this switch. When you flip it on, it becomes a calculator. Is this useful or a gimmick? For me, it's a gimmick because I still find it faster to pull up the calculator on my computer. Now this date is set, I think, to a China time zone and I still can't figure out how to change the time zone of this little screen. There's not too much documentation as of this recording on this keyboard yet. The keycaps themselves are very unique. Usually the labels are on top of keycaps. This is on the bottom side. The good news is they're pretty legible and you'll have trouble in the beginning not knowing where to look, but eventually you do get used to knowing where the labels and where to look. There are keyboard enthusiasts that like blank keycaps. It does give you a certain visual aesthetic. Having the labels on the bottom though is a good midway point between blank and regular keycaps. Basically, you get the best of both worlds. As far as the switches are concerned, I have the Rhodes Silver Linear switches. So let's do a comparison between the GK87 and my previous everyday keyboard, my Keychron keyboard. One of the features that's listed on the GK87 Pro listing is the Hi-Fi Thaki sound. Does the GK104 have that same Thaki sound? I'm happy to say yes, it does. Now, if we compare the two side by side, the slight edge might go to the GK87, but that might have to do with the slightly different switches they sent me. I don't remember what they sent me on the GK87, but the difference between the two is very minimal or non-existent, depending on who you ask. Here we are in the GK6 Plus app. This is version 1.0.0.25 on my Mac. This is the latest version as of this recording. You'll need the latest version to recognize the GK104 Pro keyboard. I had the previous version for my GK87 and it didn't recognize this keyboard, but now I have the latest version, it does. It's a very simple app. Basically, you can configure and reassign keys by pressing on one of the keys and configuring it to any of a number of different functions. This is also how we assign our uh, wheel toggle knobs here. So I can, this is the, for the left turn, right turn, and the press of the button. So that's how I configured that button. You can see there's some usability issues. 
here. Let's say I want to assign my, let's say the back key here, but I have this uh, selected. Of course, I can't get to it. I need to mouse out of it and then go back into it. So there's some usability issues here. As far as lighting effects are concerned, I haven't figured out how to configure it with this piece of software and how to make my changes stick. So I have my LE files here, which I'm not exactly sure what it does, but I can do different settings. As you can see, the different settings are showing up. I don't know if it's showing up in the recording, really. There you go. And then, but it's not showing up on my keyboard here. So it's not, it doesn't move over. And then in the configuration, if I go into, let's say, preview, these changes that I'm doing here are showing up on my keyboard, but I don't, I have to make it, I don't know how to make it stick. Or basically I can make it stick, but I need to reassign these, uh, this knob here. So if I bring it back to my Mac set here, I do not, I've lost all my customization or ability to change the lighting effects. So there's a lot to be desired as far as this software is concerned. So what do I think of the GK104 Pro from Skylong? I think this is now my everyday keyboard. What made the GK87 become my everyday keyboard over my Keychron is the customizable knobs and the typing experience having that thucky feel. Now I'm happy to say that the GK104 Pro continues that typing experience with additional functionality. I do like how the semi-blank keycaps make this keyboard really pop aesthetically. Also the LCD screen, I really like at a glance, I can get all the information that I need, such as the keyboard mode, the battery life, and the date. Of course, I can't, as of this recording, change the date or time zone of the smaller LCD screen, but hopefully they'll come out with more documentation. I do like the fact that I can customize the LCD screen to my own personal taste. And if I really wanna go back to the GK87 with the smaller design, I can just pop out the LCD screen and put it on the GK87. That's the beauty of having a customizable mechanical keyboard. You can really customize it to your personal taste. Thanks again to WhatGeek for sending me out this keyboard. I'll leave a link to the keyboard in the description below. They have set up the code TechTV10, which should give you a little bit of a discount on their site. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. Consider hitting that subscribe button. Until the next one, see ya.